What is an extremely dark true story that most people don't know about? The West Mesa Murders In 2009, a woman walking her dog on the West Mesa of Albuquerque, which was being developed for housing, discovered a human bone and brought it to the police. Subsequent investigations unearthed the remains of 11 women and a fetus, all of whom were identified as women who went missing between 2001 and 2005. Authorities believe that they were victims of a serial killer who targeted sex workers, but the case has never been solved. The story of Carl Tonsler, Dude fell in love with a younger Cuban girl who was diagnosed with tuberculosis who later died to the disease. He offered to pay for a tomb for her to be buried into his specifications which the family accepted, which turned out to be a mistake because he ended up sneaking in and taking her corpse. Later, her sister claims the doctor had been living with the body, so when the cops show up they discover a body coated in wax and turned into a sex doll. The hi-fi murders always horrified me. Three guys walk into a store and take the two teenage workers hostage, a third guy is taken hostage who arrives at the store at the worst time. Then two of the teen's parents show up looking for their kids and they are taken hostage too. What happened to the five hostages was absolutely horrific, they were beaten and assaulted and finally made to drink Drano which blistered their lips to the touch and burned all the way down. One girl was screaming so much that they tried to duct tape her mouth but the oozing blisters from the Drano meant the tape wouldn't stick. When the Drano wasn't killing them fast enough, they shot them, killing three but two survived. When they realized one man was still alive, he was strangled with a wire and then had a pen stomped into a ear canal which went right through the side of his throat. He still survived. The two survivors lived for a few more decades but with horrible chronic pain and injuries from the attack. There's a lake on the way to Disney World. Signs weren't clear and many families would accidentally drive into the lake, coincidentally with no one around. Eventually, someone caught a car going into the lake and called police. What came out of it was many missing people reports being solved. There's now a clear reflective sign where the mishaps would happen. I think a half dozen, give or take died due the lake. My mom always tells me this story. She was dating this guy who seemed really well off. He always got her jewelry as gifts and would always take her out. She says she basically treated her like a princess, and was always very nice. She said she always got a weird feeling from him but wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt since he was so nice and treated her well. The weird feeling never went away, so she broke up with him. Two months later she sees his picture on the news for murdering his mom and sister. The tragic and upsetting case of Mary Vincent. She was 15 years old when Larry Singleton assaulted her, chopped off her arms and threw her into a canyon. She miraculously survived. Wonder how much time he served for this crime? Eight years. That's all. Only eight. The name of the actual victim escapes me, but a woman was murdered and the criminal would call the victim's mother years later and ask her can I speak to your daughter? As some form of psychological torture. It was like in the 60s or something like that, so he knew it was nearly impossible for his calls to be traced. That story always infuriates me. Lebensborn is a surprisingly not very well known part of World War II. It was a breeding program to get more Aryan people. Some volunteered, but they would also kidnap especially Aryan-looking people in Scandinavia and Germany and force them. Then the children would be brought up at a SS institution, away from their biological parents. Joji Obara, who is believed to have sexually assaulted 150 to 400 women and murdered at least two in Japan. He was a wealthy man who was reported to have an obsession with Western women and developed a fetish for molesting unconscious women, to whom he had administered drugs to render them unconscious, targeting both Japanese and Western women. He would record himself assaulting them after drugging or chloroforming them, sometimes wearing a mask. He was charged with the murder of two women, an Australian national named Corita Ridgeway and an English national named Lucy Blackman. The Kentucky Fried Chicken Murders which happened in a small East Texas town in 1983. Five people who worked at a KFC were abducted and murdered. Driven to a field many miles away. I grew up just down the road from this town and still live in the area. At the time, I was a druggie who knew, well, we'll just call them undesirable type characters. As soon as this story hit the news word on the street was it was over a meth recipe. These murders went unsolved for 20 years but there are now two guys in prison for them. I and many others have our doubts about their involvement, at least as for anything but hired guns. 
I'd say it's extra creepy because if what was said at the time is true, none of the people murdered were involved with the meth part, they were just innocent employees killed as a warning to the person who had the meth recipe. It was see, we aren't ducking around, give us the meth recipe or this will be you and your family. Also, they know one of the women victims was assaulted. They found DNA on her and it doesn't match the guys in prison. So even if these guys are the killers, at least one is still out there. Also the people who had it done are still around. Two twin girls were assaulted and stabbed by underage boys in the back of a park in the town I grew up in. One died, one survived and made it to the train tracks and someone spotted her. They thought she was wearing a red bathing suit, but it was all the blood and stab wounds. The boys weren't tried as adults and in the wake of that shit show of a case laws were changed about how adolescents would be tried for violent crimes. A few years ago a local high-ranking military officer had his estranged wife locked in a mental ward and then brutally strangled their 14-year-old son and shot himself. She had gone to the cops and begged them to save her son because she believed he would kill him. There was a long history of domestic violence and death threats that the police had done nothing about, and then they wouldn't even let the woman out of the psych ward for her son's funeral. My grandma believes to have had an interaction with a serial killer. My mom had told me this story. It was my grandma, my mom and her three siblings driving out of the Bay Area very late one night. They saw a man on the side of the road with his hazards on and he was pulled over. He asked for a ride in their car to the nearest gas station. My grandma got weird vibes and decided not to help him. Months later, my grandma read in the newspaper of a description of a murder in the outskirts of San Francisco. The remains were found near the same area my family was in, and several other women were reported to have encountered the same man on that road. It was believed to be the Zodiac Killer. The torture and murder of Junko Furuta stands out in my mind as the most ducked up thing I've ever read about. A 17-year-old Japanese girl was kidnapped and held captive for 44 days. She eventually died after being lit on fire, and her captors encased her in a cement-filled, 55-gallon drum. The story of a cave explorer being trapped in the Nutty Putty Cave. On November 24, 2009, John Edward Jones died after becoming trapped in the cave for 28 hours. Rescuers concluded that it would be too dangerous to attempt to retrieve his body, the landowner and Jones's family came to an agreement that the cave should be permanently closed with the body sealed inside, a film about the tragedy called The Last Descent was released on September 16, 2016. The Story of Lena Medina She was brought to the hospital after her abdomen continued to grow in size. Her parents and doctors thought she had a tumor. Turns out she was seven months pregnant. Lena Medina is the youngest known girl to give birth. She gave birth to a son, Gerardo Medina, by cesarean section at the age of five years, seven months and 21 days. Lena's father was arrested on suspicion of sexual abuse but later released due to a lack of evidence. The Pacific Northwest has an unsolved mystery regarding severed feet that keep popping up on beaches over the past few years. All of these feet which have been found so far have shown up due to buoyant shoes. Some investigators have declared that this is the result of suicide victims' feet becoming disarticulated from the rest of their bodies as they decompose, however some sets of shoes have ended up in completely different places, x. One in False Creek, Vancouver, the other on Vancouver Island. This has created a culture of disbelief regarding these investigations. Also, for those who don't know, BC has a very comprehensive database of missing persons DNA. Many of these feet don't match anyone in said database. Some locals theorize that a serial killer is bringing their victims BC for disposal. The filming of the horror movie The Omen has been said to have been cursed. The movie is about the birth and childhood of the Antichrist, very controversial for the 70s. Many people working on the film claim to have strange and even life-threatening things happen to them. On Friday the 13th, John Richardson, the special effects consultant, was involved in a crash that killed his girlfriend-slash-assistant, Liz Moore. It was a gruesome accident his girlfriend was cut in half during the impact. Also the accident happened at mile marker 66,6 in Amman, Netherlands. The movie star and the screenwriter took separate planes to the UK for filming. Both planes got struck by lightning. Many of the people involved in the making of the film had awfully bad luck. Head-on car collisions, a hotel they were staying at being bombed, an animal handler who worked on the film was eaten alive by lions. Pretty spooky stuff if you ask me. 
A friend of mine worked as a probation officer. He said it was hard as he saw the worst in people. He said he couldn't take it anymore as there was one guy he had to see often. This guy was in his 30s and had assaulted a baby who was about a year old. When the guy came and withdrew, all of the baby's intestines came out with him. My friend said it was so hard trying to treat this guy as a human when all he wanted to do was bash his head in. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.